Welcome Illumineers, I'm your host Rush, and today we're taking a look at Meta Monday, where we're going to be breaking down the local metas of any 1k plus tournaments we've had, as well as the Pixelborn data from the last week. We're in week 8 of the data, so let's take a look at our first event. Our first event comes to us from Greenfield, Wisconsin at Warp Storm. It was their Mystic Mouse event with 28 players. In first place, we had a Amber Steel deck. Looks pretty consistent as far as the deck list is concerned. They're running Fire the Cannons and Stitch in a more aggressive style deck. Sometimes you don't see the seven drop stitches. Fire the Cannons have been seeing more prevalence and only three A Whole New Worlds. Two copies of Beast is also notable. Moving into our second place slot, we have Amber Sapphire, which has been on the rise the last couple weeks. The desk list looks pretty consistent as far as what we've seen in the meta so far. Three copies of Eye of the Fates, um, up from its normal two. Also filling out the four slots for You Have Forgotten Me, which often is run as two. Third and fourth place for this event, we're tied. We have another Amber Steel variant um, running the Bodyguard package. The Lilos and Captains as early aggressive one drop options, either aggro or a little more defensive with the Captain Hook. Things like Simba, Hercules, it is also running the Fire the Cannons hook. Interesting that it is only running two copies of Fire the Cannons and only one big tank. This deck is kind of all over the place as far as what it wants to be doing and only one copy of a whole new world. But they ended up pulling out third slash fourth with it, so might be something to look into. In fourth place, we have a pretty standard Amethyst Ruby deck other than the fact that it's one drop is four copies of Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse, the one three stat line. Other than that, everything in it is pretty much standard for the more evasive style deck. Fourth, fifth, or sorry, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth all split as well. We have a nether amber steel deck with a pretty standard package of cards, subbing in the Cerberus, going up to the four count for Beast. They're running one copy of Moana, which is interesting. We've kind of seen that float in and out as far as being teched in, and also one, cost, uh, one copy of seven drop Simba in there as well. Interesting little tech there. I'm assuming for the Amethyst Ruby pair up, so it can take down some of those larger characters. Going into the next slot, we have a Emerald Sapphire deck. Again, running a pretty standard package. Um, it's interesting to see the eight drop genies in here, which have been seeing more popularity lately. Only two copies of Eye of the Fates. A full suite of Mother Knows Best and Let It Go for removal options. But pretty standard across the board. I do apologize if I'm going fast through some of these. We've got three events plus pixel board information to go through. The next one is going to be Amethyst Emerald. Again, another pretty standard variant of the deck. This one is running the Peter Pans. Nothing else that really stands out for me. Three drop or two drop Genie is interesting to see. Haven't seen a lot of him being played, but it is generally something you see when you're running the other Genie as well. And for the eighth deck, we have a Amber Sapphire deck again. This one's running the Jasmine variant. You got your low drop stitches. They're playing out a lot more. Uh, another co another option of one and two drops, the more mid range variant with the Stitch, Simba, and Phil package. Running three copies of You Have Forgotten Me and only two Robin Hoods. And the low drop variant of Jasmine, as well as the Mr. Shmi. 
And that'll close us out for the first Warp Storm event. At the second event we're taking a look at that was hosted by Pat's Games in Austin, Texas. Their 1K event on October 14th hosted 54 players. And they split, it looks like, the top four players and then the fifth through eighth placing, all split prizing. So we'll look at the top four players first. Starting off with an Amber Emerald deck. Looks like it's hosting a very accelerated scheme with a fair amount of low drops like Lilo, Stitch, and Duke of Wesselton. It's hosting the just in times in order to get out Hatters, Cusco's, Maximus. Running three six drop stitches in order to accelerate their card draw. Three copies of You Have Forgotten Me to help hand control. Interesting one copy of Meg. Here I'm assuming to answer some problems they may run, may run into. And it's also hosting the Rapunzel's and the Hanses. All around, pretty standard as far as what we've seen for Amber Emerald right now, as far as the more aggressive style aggro deck over the mid range. And starting off with our first of five Amethyst Ruby decks, I'm going to go through these fairly quickly just so we can note anything that might stand out. This one looks straightforward for the evasive scheme. The second Amethyst Ruby we have in the top four host the broom package no mickeys and a couple of the evasives so a little bit more mixed the last deck in our top four is going to be an emerald sapphire deck which has seen a little bit more popularity right now i don't know personally if it's up there for me but we'll have to take a look three copies of eye of the fates in this one a few low drops all the two two variants it is also running a couple copies of Phil. Looks like Aurora is their main, especially since they have the shift Aurora in here. Otherwise, pretty much everything we see out of a normal standard Sapphire Emerald combination. Going the fifth through eighth place slots, the first one up is Amethyst Emerald. Again, this one's a little more straightforward compared to the last one we saw out of the Warp Storm events. Four copies of Olaf, four copies of Pascal, which helps keep Pascal alive. Flynn Rider. Interesting, they went with the four copies of Genie. And nothing else really stands out as far as this deck. Generally only see two copies of John Silver in here. The three copies of Mother Knows Best and four copies of Friends on the other side are all standard. Moving on to the third Amethyst Ruby deck out of five again in this event that hit the top eight. This one run is running the two copies of Brune Package and the Dr. Facilier's at the two drop. Um, and it is also running two copies of the seven drop Dr. Facilier. Interesting to see that one. Let's see the next Amethyst Ruby deck is very similar to the last one we saw, except it doesn't run the Facilier's. It's running three copies of Broom, a couple more evasives. Pretty standard across the board, though. The last one we have on here is running the Donald Ducks. A little bit more of an aggressive low package. And no Magic Mirrors. Interesting. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the Pat's Games event. At the third event we had this weekend, at Level Up Games, hosting 45 players. It was a 1.5k tournament. And I believe for this one, we actually have a actual Swiss cut to the top eight and final results. In first place, we have Ruby Sapphire, which has been seeing more prevalence against the top two Ruby Amethyst and Sapphire Steel decks. Its mid-range and late-game ability has been making it compete on par, if not above. But good job for getting this one to first for this player. This one is pretty standard across the board. Two Eye of the Fates, um, three copies of Six Drop Stitch, four copies of Seven Drop Stitch, all four of the Robin Hoods for six cost. 
Rapunzel's three copies of Hades compared to four. But it looks probably because it's running the flounders in here instead of just the stitches. Yeah. And three copies of Lantern. Interesting. In second place, we had the first Amethyst Ruby of this tournament. Pretty standard item package down below. Matter of fact, everything in here looks as standard as it can be, really, for the uh, face of package. Well, let's move on to the next one. Third place, we did have another Amber Sapphire. Looking like it is pretty much the exact same deck as the first one. Yeah, there's a few changes. This one is running the songs variant, which I actually like a little bit more. Allowing you to sing those Let It Goes, grab some extra cards which become inkable off of for Ariel if you don't need them, like Be Our Guest. My variant is slightly different than this one, but a little bit more like this one than the first place winner. That stitch can be fairly useful. The six drop stitch can be fairly useful. In fourth place, we have our first Amber Steel deck, which has been dropping down a little bit. It seems like a lot more people are going back to the songs variant of this, running a whole new world, which is a tough performer in decks that can also take advantage of it, especially if they know you're running a whole new world as your package. Now this one is draw running the mid-range bodyguard package with Goofy and Maximus for five drops. And it looks like they're trying to take a little bit more value out of that mid to late game by running the Goofy's Maximus, the Moana's six drop stitches and Tinkerbell's and utilizing a few of those with just in time which makes a little bit more sense. In fifth place, we have another Amber Ruby packet or Amethyst Ruby package. This one is running the wardrobes to help prevent a little bit of aggro. Other than that, pretty straightforward. No Ursula's Cauldron, which is interesting, but they are running two pocket watches. In sixth place, we have another Amber Steel deck. This one is running the Beast for a counter of Amber Ruby, and sometimes some Steel Decks with Beast Mirror. Four copies of Lantern to help fuel the, the engine of the deck. All four copies of A Whole New World, all four Grab Your Swords, no smashes in here. They're running much more towards the late game, it looks like, like this. And the utilization of six drop stitch with all of the low drops to help them continually card draw. Don't know how I feel about this one. Putting six drop stitch in a deck to assist you in drawing cards while utilizing a whole new world to discard your hand. I'm assuming they're going with the flood the board kind of pattern. But if you do that, I don't know how I feel about things like stitch and Tinkerbell, which are kind of counterintuitive to that but we'll see how that one works out especially with four copies of lantern in seventh place we have our third amber sapphire deck this one running the jasmine line like a few of the ones we've seen before it is also running one copy of maximus which is interesting to see and a couple copies of One Jump Ahead for their ramp package. Four copies of their big drops like Maleficent's, Hades, Robin Hood, Seven Drop Stitch. Yeah, these are all somewhat slight variants on the average deck of each ink combination. And that was seventh place. Eighth place is Sapphire Steel, actually. Interesting to see it getting this far in this tournament. I believe it was 54 players. Running the standard aggro package on the low end. Running a whole new world. Grab your swords. Four copies of Beast Mirror. Four copies of Quill to help dredge through it. And then their late game is big hitters like Bell, Aurora, Maleficent. Beast for the counter. 
six drops tanks and four of the Hades. All right, now let's get into the Pixelborn meta. In Pixelborn, from last week to this week, considering all games over the last two weeks being played, Amber Steel is still the top, Ruby Amethyst is still following, pretty much everything stayed the same. The slight changes in Emerald Steel and Emerald Amber have swapped their respective places. I believe it's sixth and seventh place and 11th and 12th place have swapped, which is Ruby Emerald has now surpassed Amber Amethyst. So nothing we see too prevalently in the format right now. Switching over to both top 100 players. And the reason I go with both top 100 players is because you really don't want to factor in some of the better players versus your or more seasoned players against people that are not seasoned. So if you consider both top 100 players, it pretty much stays the same in the top. Amber Steel, Ruby Amethyst, and Sapphire Amber are pretty much dominating the most played games as we've seen. And then if you take a look in the middle, everything's kind of going all over the place, being tried out. I'm assuming this is where a lot of people are trying out different decks and different formats. And then Amethyst Steel still all the way down at the bottom in 13th place. Ruby Steel just below that in 14th place and then Ruby Sapphire in 15th place last week and has actually dropped off the map entirely, which means it's less than 200 games played when you're considering the top 100 players. So I'd probably stay away from the bottom few there. Not seeing very much representation, I believe, for a reason. They just don't provide a lot of value currently. The win rates as far as the top or all of the games considered. So what you're gonna see in a majority of the Pixelborn ladders is going to be Amber Amethyst coming in on top. This is a lot of people's favorite deck to play, especially if they're new, because a lot of decks can't really compete against it as far as its speed, unless you're playing Amber Steel Songs can keep up with it pretty well because it has a low or it has a more aggressive gameplay as well as its ability to sing, grab your swords really early in the game can slow down their momentum. This is where you're gonna see a lot of the more aggressive decks like Emerald Steel, Ruby Amber has gone down a little bit from last week, but is still in the top three as far as most game played overall. You have Sapphire Steel kind of coming up from the bottom. Emerald Amethyst about the same, dropped one spot. Ruby Amethyst has dropped a lot in the overall gameplay. I assume this is because a lot of people that have not played it repetitively can see some pretty bad matchups. It's still winning about 50% of the time. The Evasives deck is still about 50-50, same slotting from last week. Ruby Steel has seen a lot more gameplay or a lot more wins from the previous week, but I still don't think it's anything we can really reliably play. Sapphire Amber is starting to come up in the overall gameplay. And then everything else is kind of not a lot of play overall, lower on the win rates. Getting into the, oops, getting into the win rate of both top 100 players. It comes into something we've seen a little bit more. These seasoned players have, I'm assuming, started to pick back up with Ruby Amethyst. Last week, it was really low on the list. I'm assuming this is more to do with the switch from the standard Ruby Amethyst list, more over to the evasive style, which can compete a lot more against some of these mid-range decks and some of the more aggro heavy decks. Dropping just below that, we have Amber Ruby, which again is one of my personal favorite decks, it's sitting at a 50.1. 51% win rate, 50.9. Amethyst Ruby was at 53.6, but if you look at his previous week, it was only at 46.9. That could be just because of the Evasives package or just a lot more people have been playing it that are in the higher part of the ladder trying out the Evasives version. Emerald Steel has seen a pretty big jump from last week to this week up to 50.9 right next to Ruby Amber. Amber Steel has jumped up a little bit from last week. It's at 50.7% win rate right now. 
from its 50.3 last week. Sapphire Amber has gone down just a little bit in its placement at 50.3. So these decks right here, the Ruby Amethyst, Ruby Amber, Emerald Steel, Amber Steel, Amber Sapphire are probably where most people want to be putting their, their effort into. I still do strongly agree that everybody should be trying some of these lower win rate decks. I think it's just because a lot of them haven't been flushed out. That being said, things like Ruby Steel and the such, probably not something you want to be playing. If you look at the, the chart on the right, you can see its win rate is drastically going down. Sapphire Emerald uh, right above it. Whilst this is seeing a lot more gameplay in some top eights and there's a lot more people talking about it, I still don't think it has the overall win rate versus many of the top decks right now. So that's going to kind of give you a decent breakdown of where the Pixelborn meta is going, especially with seasoned players, which is where you should all be trying to get to and not just playing most of the net decks that you see. Take some of these people that have played these decks into the ground and tried many, many different variations to try to get them to perform and utilize this knowledge for that. Just because it's not at the top of this list doesn't mean somebody who's played enough with a deck like Ruby Emerald and knows how to play against some of the top decks can't win against them. Same thing with something like Amber Amethyst, which is a very quick deck. You can see that a lot of newer players have done quite well with Amber Amethyst just because of how quick the deck is. And that kind of concludes what we wanted to talk to today about the meta. We're going to kind of keep doing these every Monday. I believe as of today, we have crossed over 800 subscribers. So I believe when we get to a thousand subscribers, we're going to celebrate with another giveaway, which hopefully should be before Rise of the Floodborne. So maybe we'll give some product away for that. But whenever we cross that threshold, we'll go ahead and we will announce a giveaway for it. So that being said, thank you for watching Illumineers. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay up to date on everything Lorcana. I'll see you on the next one.